I am Franklin Cardi, and it was only by chance I was able to come to this opening. I had only a basic camcorder and a hand mic, and just 40 minutes after the reception to record this interview. We actually lasted for 10 years. We put on seven exhibitions, and all, you know, off our own, off our own bat. And that, that I think is the amazing thing about Group 63. I think, uh, I think it's important to know how it started, you know, because we all met then. Um, uh, Nelson Bell was the manager of the Key Gallery, which had been recently refurbished. And I, I had been meeting up with other artists like John, Dick and so on, and we all thought we were trying to do what they thought in Dublin, which was to set up our own independent group and organise our own exhibitions. And, I asked Nelson if such a group were formed, would he give us an exhibition? And much to my surprise, he agreed. And then we called a meeting in Cosgrove's Bar, Spanish Rooms in King Street, and about 10 or 15 artists came. And some of them didn't stay much longer, but, and then 12, I don't know, about eight of us are showed in the McGee Gallery, first of all. And at that time, we didn't have any name. Then we had a, an exhibition in, we approached Michael Emerson, in, uh, uh, who was running the Queen's Festival at that time about giving us a better space. And we had the David Keir building, which was for very much improvised in hallways and atriums and so on. So for the next year, we said we wanted a better space. And he gave us the McMorty Hall, which is now the music department in Queen's. And for that, he had said to me, for the catalogue, we really need a, a name. So I just decided on Group 63 because we had really started in 63 and we went on from there from strength to strength. But there was people joining and leaving all the time in the group. I don't Brian, you had joined in 67 yes. to uh, fill the vacancies created by John Valade and others who had yeah. left. Yes. And that was at a time when an exhibition was put on in the museum. Now, Jack will know who initiated the museum exhibition. Yeah, we... Ford Smith. Ford Smith, Ford Smith offered us the Ulster Museum, f and we were very, very surprised, and we filled three, three rooms, I think we had, and uh, we actually had the TV company were actually filming us, and we were all dead chuffed, and suddenly they up and went, and they said, where are you going? They said, Stormont had just fallen, or mm -hmm. somebody had done something up in Storm, and they left us, so I'm afraid we lost all our publicity <laughs> in one fell swoop, um, which was an but awful then we pity. showed in the Caldwell Gallery, and then later on in the Ulster, Ulster Office in London. That, that, was, that was great, because I put up the, the exhibition, and <coughs> then, we had a marvellous opening night, and then they told us we can't open the place to the public. There's too big a chance of a bomb being put in here, so the exhibition closed on the opening night. <laughs> we were not the luckiest group. <laughs> Shall we put it that way? Oh, well, I, didn't, I didn't join until 1973. I think the Caldwell Gallery was the first show I was in. Although I did go for a drink in the in Cosgroves uh, and met up with the, the group from right. time to time. Right. But I didn't really show until, say, 1973. So it was 10 years after you really started. We got a show in uh, the uh, Seema Gallery in Chichester Street. Uh, I, I know, but did, uh, oh. that was, was that not a, a Cecil one-off? Uh, wanting to put sheep skulls all around the walls and, and ones that still had the flesh yeah. on. But that was one of um, the Arts Council's uh, young artists. Wow. Yes. And, and I think and it was the, Arts, the Arts Council gave separate exhibitions to members, but not to the members as a group. Ah. Yes. Uh, they can show yeah. Uh, 
It was the Young and Average Artists Foundation do together and uh, yeah. most of the group were I think not one was done as I was, I was, oh. yeah, I was in it. I was in it. And you were in it. it was Brian Ballard was in it. Denson Fry was in it. David Crone was in it. Well, you were in it. I was yeah. in it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I sent it to the work from London. That's right. Yeah. It was yeah. the next year, I think. Um, and we all got 25 quid. Just <laughs> <laughs> and in those days, 25 quid. I didn't. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, we were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was rich. Quid back. It's beginnings. It was, yeah. And lots of pictures were sold too. And that was the beginning and the end. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's odd that we all started <coughs> showing and our prices were in guineas. Yes, that's true. It had uh, that eventually faded out. <laughs> Very sensibly. We were saying maybe the only other thing that remains is horses. They're still in guineas, I think. Yeah. Horse sales are in guineas. Okay. I think so. Yeah, they? and they're measured in hands as well. <laughs> they, they are, that's right. Do you remember the exhibition we had in London and I was coming to own and I contacted Gallagher's to get some sponsorship oh, yes. and they said they would give us 200 cigarettes which I collected. And I also contacted the Ulster Brewery and they said they could have two bottles of sherry and I had to go to that place in up a full road somewhere, which is not getting in the road. Careful place, yeah. And uh, I got these things and I took them on the plane to go to the place. We got the six there. Could you drag us? Yes, we did. Yeah. <coughs> Until we got asked to leave. I think Gallagher's gave us four packets of cigarettes. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Show them Belfast, yeah. But go, going back to your question about how the troubles affected us. Um, I think Jack has actually painted the Guernica for Belfast. I was affected by it slightly, but living up the coast in Bally Alley, uh, it was, I was more removed from the more immediate effects of what was happening in Belfast. But my uh, my little cruel box with the teeth in it is a reflection on what was happening in the 1970s in, in Northern Ireland. Jack was the main... Well, he, he was in the thick of it, really. And that yeah, was, that's right. I think we all produced one or two or three. Yeah, yeah. everybody I was living on the Cosmeray Hills, and yes. I had to take children to school, and we were interfered with by the, the police and so on. Mm. And from the, the windows of the house, you could see all these bombs going on. So I produced... Three paintings which culminated in 1972 with direct rule, yeah. and after that I said no more. Yeah. Mm. That was it. Several of you said you did a few new paintings. John, you said you did. Yes, I have. I. I... You still, <coughs> you still have them, or I, I still have them. Uh, but. <coughs> I, I don't. I don't show them. Yeah. So when you when you've done that, do you feel you've got it out of your system? Yes. Mm. No, I, I, I think uh, the legacy of Northern Ireland is still very much with myself. Um, I think that we may deny that uh, it hasn't affected us, but uh, not. There's. A frustration about, at least from myself, the frustration of a political system in, in Northern Ireland that uh, it's hard to put into art, but there's a, a lingering thing in it that affects us, or affects me anyway. But well, getting it out of your system and getting it into your artworks are two different things. Yeah. That it subliminally takes you over yeah. in some respects. But the constraints are such that you are calm, and Jack doesn't. But I would remove it from actually making, making the artworks, but it is still there. Yeah. Whereas it is the essence of Jack's work over a long period. Yeah. I think Jack's work is political with quite a, a big P, and the rest of it, you know, minus political with a very small P, if you can find it. 
was that? There, there was a peace exhibition. Do you remember that, John? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I, I put that order down, Patrick. That's uh, right. Cathedral. That was when you had moved uh, back here. Yes. It? Yeah. it was <clears throat> odd because I had to ask the minister, could he just do without bringing up religion? Uh -huh. And I thought this... This is madness to do this in the church. <laughs> but it worked because we had the Camilla singers, we had Mike Longley um, reciting poems. And must have 30 or 40 artists as well. Oh, yes. There were, there were people writing from Dublin to ask could they put into the show. But one of the th things that I think is so important about it art uh, and the artists. We all got along together no matter what the troubles went mm -hmm. on, but we all stayed together. We, you know, argued about paint, but that's, that's about it. Was there a, a um, brochure for that exhibition? Is there still one around? Not that I'm aware of, no. No catalogue? No. I, I was teaching in Annadale during the Troubles and at one point the, the junior school was firebombed and a lot of the classrooms were all burnt down and um, I took a lot of photographs and did some drawings and in actual fact I've got a painting which I started well, much at that time and I came across it recently and I thought I'd finish it which maybe I'll do but it was the, the whole building was constructed of aluminium and uh, cardboard walls, I think. And uh, all the aluminium had melted and it had fused into all the desks. And there were some beautiful shapes made out of it. I must finish that sometime. I two studios. I left them, but they were, they were blown up. No, it was nice of them to let me go. But why they done it? Well, they looked close. Lucky you weren't in it. Yes. Especially with an exhibition in it. I think he was claiming a bit of his work on the moon. Took a long time to resolve. I would say. To answer your question about a catalogue or a listing, the Lindenhall Library put together an archive of absolutely everything relating to the Troubles all of the various uh, news sheets, propaganda material, things that in any way related, and they have a very extensive archive. And currently, the Ulster Museum is engaged in inviting people to bring their memorabilia to the local history department at the museum so that it can be collated and, and held forevermore. Uh, Malcolm, what, what about you? What did you... Do you feel you were affected at all by that? You, does your art feel... Not really it? very much. I mean, I moved from Belfast, although I lived in Shankill Road mm -hmm. um, when Group 63 was started. Mm -hmm. But I moved then to the, uh, to the country and lived in Money Moor, taught in, uh, in Cookstown mm -hmm. for quite a while. And then in 69, actually, when the troubles were breaking out, mm -hmm. uh, I moved down to, to Malisle direction between Malay and Cardo. So it didn't really affect me all that much, but like everybody else, I mean, I did do some paintings of, they were called um, Under the Surface, and they were to do with things that had been blown up, and things that were sort of lying underneath things, and some, some horrific uh, murders and things fitted in with some figurative work that I was doing at that time. But generally speaking, there wouldn't have been an awful lot. The strange thing was that um, although a lot of us would have gone down to Dublin and would have gone south with exhibitions, there wasn't really an awful lot of people from the south would have been coming up here at that time. And that was understandable, of course. So when we knew people from the old Bagatrath group and so on. I mean, you know, like the artists there, people like John Bain and, and, and uh, some of the others, Kelly and, and such like, I mean, they would never have come up here. But we used to go down and show with them in the Independence, Jack and myself and some, some of the rest of you probably too. Irish Living Art. Irish Living Art too, yeah, that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, they, would, they would send up there. That's right. But I was thinking about included. So yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, well, it did too. That's right. That's right. Can I be commercial and say, did, did you sell many of your troubles paintings? No. No. I sold one. Did you? Yeah, and then I gave up making it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an unlucky sign. Yeah. So, I sold. Did you? Um, I even sold one to the, the Arts Council, the man who hated flags, uh, which is now in the collection of the Ulster Museum. Um, in fact, there's a, a YouTube thing that was. Uh, Artists of the Troubles, or Art of the Troubles, that uh, the Ulster Museum made to accompany uh, an exhibition that was, what, two years ago now? I think the important thing is that we are all still painting because we think of the number of people we dropped out uh, who were disillusioned, but we got into the habit of organising our own exhibitions from start to finish, catalogues, everything, high in the exhibition, and that discipline has carried through the all of us and we grew up. We're all practicing artists today, which is, to me is really quite remarkable. If you look at the history of a lot of art groups, they come and they go and they disappear. And yeah, it was a very dynamic period ago. with yeah. the Belfast Festival and our association with the festival. I, I think it was uh, of mutual benefit to, to everybody here. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we used, to, we used to meet every month in uh, one of the bars in Belfast and have general discussions. We didn't always talk about art, but we had a, a certain camaraderie, and unfortunately, the troubles just made that impossible in the end. Tom Caldwell sort of take over some of the artists from that group and showed them on a yeah. more regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. Individually. Individually, yeah. of course, yes. And the 10-year mark, which Jack mentions, was probably coinciding with the height of the Troubles, 73 to 75, uh-huh. is considered the spike and the worst yeah. period. And so meeting regularly, etc., was uh-huh. difficult. And at that time, people weren't coming out to exhibitions. For example, I mean, Brian Ballard and I ran the Arts Council Gallery, and on one occasion, right in the 19, I think it was 1973, there was the artist Ryan Ballard and myself and our two wives and not one person turned up to the private view. And it was bombing time, it was winter, it was very discommoding for everyone. So you managed to keep working? A lot of us, two of us would have taught for quite a lot of years. We had to uh, teach to keep our heads above water. So do you feel you made a success of what you wanted to do? I couldn't do it. Could do anything else. Yeah. That's, right. that's what we do. That's, yeah. what, that's what we do. Well, I hate to survive. So staying alive is a success. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we say it's pretty good. <laughs> well, we're still here. Yeah, right. Jack said it. We're, we're still working. So, yeah. um, how many of you feel that you've accomplished what you would like to have? Well, I think we'd all have been happier doing better than we have. But I, I don't have to struggle. So I, I don't really put myself out to show uh, commercially that much. We're all well known in Ireland, but beyond that, I mean, if we were to go and show, or maybe show somewhere else, it would be uh, quite difficult, I think. I'm still waiting to start. <laughs> I'm hoping to get better. <laughs> <laughs> Many of you talked about the Ulster environment. And has that continued to be a big influence on you? Yes. For all of you, or just...? Not so much. I would tend to gravitate to places where they've been on holiday and more abroad, and then maybe Connemara and Mayo, Dingle, over the west of Ireland. Um, yes. Sounds a bit strange, but I sort of painted this out, you know, didn't find the interest after about five or six years. Mm-hmm. Which, is, which is just me, because I know John, and, you know, and they have, you know, very much immersed yourself in your yeah. own you know, I'm very reliant on still yeah. life. Well, I do a lot of still life. life. Yeah, yeah. You enjoy that? Yeah, of course. Cool. The thing is, to, where do we go from here? Is this the end, or do we hope we have one in 50 years or? <laughs> yeah, see you in 20. That's a good question to answer. Yeah.
probably depends who's who's prepared to offer something, isn't it? A venue and <laughs> money. <laughs> well, the students at the University of Ulster will be running out of PhD subjects, so I think our time could come in ten years' time. <laughs> <laughs> That's comfort. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs>